Okay, another thing we can do to secure our Windows servers is to enable BitLocker on the drives. And that encrypts data at rest. And by data at rest, we mean data that's just sitting on a drive. Data in motion is data moving across the network. So just a couple of terms for you to be aware of. So BitLocker will allow us to encrypt uh, data at rest, data sitting on our hard drives. And the reason we do that is if somebody tries to boot the computer off of a flash drive or something like that, we want, to, we want that um, data at rest to stay encrypted so they can't get access to it. If somebody pops a hard drive out and walks off with it, we want the data on there to be encrypted. That's why we use BitLocker Drive Encryption. Now, BitLocker Drive Encryption really, really wants a TPM. Technically, it'll work without a TPM, but you're going to have to make some changes to group policy probably to get it to function. So I'm sitting on a virtual machine here. I do not have a virtual TPM. Now, in Hyper-V, it's not default to put that in place. I don't know why it should be, but that's okay. So I'm going to restore this down a little bit. I'm going to go to File. Oh, I can't actually do this. Let me shut down my system first. I can't make the change without powering off my system. So I'm going to power, shut down. Yep. Shut down anyway, and that's going to take down my system. So now, nope, I don't need you to do that. Oops. Let me bring up my Hyper-V Manager. We're going to move this right over here. Here's my system, and I'm going to right-click and go to Settings. And under Security, I can enable Trusted Platform Module right here. A TPM, Special Port, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and then I can encrypt the state and virtual machine migration traffic, which I don't care about at the moment. But that enables my TPM. So now I'm going to fire up my virtual machine. We're going to maximize that. And we're going to let that boot back up with its TPM. Now, uh, yes, go ahead and give me an advanced connection or an enhanced connection. OK. Um, for Windows Server, BitLocker is not installed automatically. And this is not coming up the way I want it to. Let's try to bring this back up. There we go. Okay. Um, so uh, BitLocker is not installed automatically, which means I'm going to need to install it, and I'm going to need to install it from Server Manager. Uh, the server manager, in server manager, BitLocker is a feature, not a role. So when I go to install it, I'm going to have to remember to skip the role and just do the feature. Now, this is taking it a little bit to process its group policy client. So I'm going to go ahead and pause our video. Never mind. Just as I say that, it comes back up. Go figure. All right. Login. Wait for server manager to load. And I'm going to go to manage and add roles and features. Oh, catch up. Thank you for your cooperation. Roller feature based installation. Yep, this server. Now, I don't care about the role, so I'm just going to skip that. I don't have to choose a role. I can go straight to a feature. And right here is my BitLocker drive encryption. And yes, add that. Now, I want to point out something here, BitLocker Network Unlock. Uh, we're not going to install that. But one of the challenges with BitLocker on servers is if you set them up to use anything other than a TPM, so anything additional beyond a TPM, power goes out, system comes back up, uh, or the system goes down because power goes back up. When power comes on and it tries to reload, it actually won't reload because it's waiting for whatever that key is to unlock. So Network Unlock allows us to remotely unlock devices across the network. So I do not have to physically go to every single server to unlock, which is really beneficial, by the way, if the server's in a remote site. It won't work over Wi-Fi. It has to be physically connected. But this is something that will allow me to remote unlock um, BitLocker drives. All right. And install. So we're going to run this install, and this is going to install BitLocker for us, 
And then once it's installed, we can look at configuring it. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and we'll try this again. Pause the video while the installation completes, and then we'll pick it back up once it's done. Okay, my installation is completed, and it's giving me a little notification here. A restart is pending. I have to restart in order for the installation to finish. So I'm fine with that. Not a production server. I'm good with it. Up here is my notification. Uh, restart is pending. Yep, we know. So I'm going to come down here, and I'm going to power and restart. And when it restarts, I should be ready to begin working with, um, with BitLocker. There you go. Oh, you're still stopping services. This is going to take a second. Now we're working on our restart. Okay. Uh, once again, I'm going to go ahead and pause until the server comes back up and I get logged back in. Okay, we are rebooted. We are logging back in. Server Manager is coming back up. Okay, there are a few ways that we can activate BitLocker. So one of them is by using the control panel. One of them is by using group policies. We'll take a look at those in a second. We've also got a couple of command line options. We have uh, PowerShell has a lot of options for us. And then we have a command line tool called manage uh, dash BDE, BitLocker Drive Encryption, that we can use to manage from command prompt as well. We're going to start with the control panel, though. So I'm going to do a search for control panel and open my control panel app. And from there, I'm going to do a search for BitLocker. And here is my BitLocker Drive Encryption. So I'm going to click on that, and I can turn BitLocker on my fixed drives. Uh, BitLocker to go. I can use a removable USB flash drive to use that. Uh, here's my TPM management. I'm just going to turn on BitLocker. And, okay, BitLocker drive encryption detected a boot, boot, bootable media. Let me go to media, DVD drive, eject that. Okay. Remove the media, restart the computer before configuring BitLocker. All right, so another restart coming here because I forgot to pull that off or pull that out. So start, power, and restart one more time. And we'll go ahead and pause while it does the reboot and then come back in as soon as we are logged in again. Okay, we're coming back up, so let's give this another go. Open control panel. Search for BitLocker. Manage BitLocker drive encryption. Turn on BitLocker. And away it goes. Okay, now, key thing here, no pun intended, is the recovery key. What happens if the recovery key gets lost? Well, I can print out the recovery key or I can save it to a file. Those are my options here. I actually have a few other options at some other places that might be a little more productive. But for the moment, I am going to save this to a file just so that I have it. And I'm going to put it on the desktop. BitLock recovery key. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, oh, it doesn't want me to do it there. Uh, can't be saved to an encrypted drive. I'm going to have to save it somewhere else. Okay, well, in that case, let me cancel it. And I'll just cancel creating a recovery key right. Nope, don't want to cancel BitLocker setup. Let's print a recovery key. Print to PDF. Okay, there we go. So the idea, by the way, of that save it to a file is you'd probably save it to a flash drive or something to that effect. Okay, encrypt use space only. Yep, that's going to be good. Encrypt the entire drive. Uh, slower but best for PCs with drives already in use. This is a new PC and drive. I'm just going to go with that. Uh, new encryption mode versus a compatible mode, best for drives that can be moved from this device. This is going to be a fixed drive, so we're going to use the new encryption mode. And yes, let's start encrypting. And away it goes, encrypting its data. Now, while it is doing that, BitLocker C drive, BitLocker is encrypting. While it is doing that, yes, I know encryption is in process. Thank you. Let's open up group policy because we can manage BitLocker across our network. If it'll let me actually do it, 
encryption might be taking up too much time. We can manage it from a uh, group policy. It's working on it. That encryption is slowing it down right here. As long as that's encrypting, things are going to be running a little bit more slowly. So let me see if I can get this to respond. Tools, group policy management. And we'll take a look at our BitLocker options. Now, again, this is going to be a little bit slow until uh, this particular process finishes. So I'm going to create a new group policy object, and I'm going to call it BitLocker Encryption. And then I'm going to open up my BitLocker Encryption. Oops. Let me right-click on my BitLocker Encryption. Double-clicking on it isn't actually going to help. I'm going to right-click and edit. There we go. Right-click and edit. And my settings for BitLocker are going to be in Computer Configuration, Policies, uh, Windows Settings, Wait for that to load for a second. It's actually not Windows settings, sorry. Administrative templates, Windows components, and then BitLocker drive encryption. And this is where I have all of my options, and I can set it for fixed drives, for operating system drives, and for removable drives. So operating system drives allow network unlock at startup. Remember we talked about that at the beginning, that BitLocker unlock that or BitLocker unlock, network unlock, we can set all of our options, including how we want this to work with TPM only. Uh, what if there's not a TPM? Do we want to use a file on USB drive to unlock? Do we want to use a pin number to unlock? Um, what do we want to require or allow? But the other thing that I really want to point out to you is back out here, and this is store BitLocker recovery information in Active Directory. So I can enable that, and what will happen is it will now save, and this gives you the full detail behind it. But basically, that BitLocker key will be stored in Active Directory. So if you know, I had the option, I could save it to a file, I could print it out. By uh, storing it in Active Directory, if I need to recover that, I can go to the computer account in Active Directory right click on it and I can access the recovery information from there and that becomes much easier than trying to manage a bunch of files or a bunch of printouts to try to find what we need. So I'm going to go ahead and apply that setting and click OK. Now um, we're going to pretend like I made some other changes to this and I'm going to close this out and I've got all of my BitLocker settings here. Now remember that does not take effect until I actually link that to a GP uh, to a um, organizational unit, a domain, a site, something like that. And if I want this to go for everything in my domain, then I would do this. I would right click on that, and I would do 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 do. do. Let me do it. Here, I'm going to go to Bassett301.local, right click, and link an existing GPO. And I'm on my BitLocker encryption linked to my entire domain. Okay, one last thing. Let's go to PowerShell. So I'm going to right-click and go to Windows PowerShell Admin. And we are going to run the command get-bitlockervolume. And this should tell us for each of our volumes in this computer which volume type, the mount point, the capacity, and the volume status, we are fully encrypted. We are connect, uh, our key protector is TPM and a recovery password. Okay, so at this point, we are fully encrypted on our server with BitLocker drive encryption.